SpaceX says we've recently uh, we've received approval to develop Space Launch Complex 37 for Starship operations at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. Construction has started. With three launch pads in Florida, Starship will be ready to support America's national security and Artemis goals as the world's premier spaceport continues to evolve uh, to enable airport-like operations. We'd like to thank the Department of the Air Force, 45th Space Force, and U.S. Fish and Wildlife for their effort on the environmental review. Now, uh, Elon, I want to show you where this is for, uh, let's, you know what? Let's read this Elon tweet, and I'll show you where that um, is on the map. SpaceX is accelerating rapidly. When Starship is launching several times a day in a few years, SpaceX will be 99% of all Earth payload mass to orbit, even if the others triple their current launch rate. And this is from a tweet from Steve uh, Jurvetson. Um the quarter three launch report just came out for kilogram launch to orbit. SpaceX has 97% share for the U S and 83% globally. The Chinese launchers add up to 8.6% looking into the graphs, magnifying box IDF just nudged past rocket lab. And this is in that's insane. Look at this graph. They are so far past everybody else that it's not even close not even close for SpaceX. They are destroying everybody. And when Elon says they're going to be launching several times a day, I want you to think about this. They're going to have their two launchers at the Cape. They're going to have two launchers at Starbase by that time. So and then they may even have more by that time too. They may have six launchers at any given time in the next few years. Now, if Starship were to launch six times in one day, they would land 12 times that day if everything returns properly. Think of that for a second. You see airplanes coming in and out. You know, you go to an airport, you can sit under the airport, like the launch area, right? We have one nearby where you can drive underneath and you can kind of see it. You can park so close. And the launches happen or the flights happen every X amount of minutes, right? Like 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever. Now, if you have six rockets going to space, two of those could be tankers. Two of those could be uh, starships that are getting ready to go someplace. So you got four already. And then you've got two more We're doing something else. Who knows what they're doing? Maybe they're a tanker in another starship. And they're fueling up and they're trying to get to Mars. Maybe they're trying to get to the moon. Maybe they're trying to do some other science work. Maybe they're launching uh, Starlink satellites, some of them. But you could have six to 12. You could have six launches per day, which is incredible. You could have a morning launch and a night launch of the Starship. Or you could have two launches almost simultaneously, like hours apart. If the, if the ground crews are fine. Or... You could just scatter them out throughout the day. And you could have numerous launches from across the southern uh, border of uh, the United States. Florida, Texas. It's just like they just can launch so many. And it's going to be incredible that this is what's going to actually happen. And I believe Elon here. In a few years, SpaceX will be 99% of all Earth payload mass to orbit. Um several times a day. When he says several, what does he mean though? Does he mean two launches per day? I think what's going to happen, and this is, this is what I'm hoping happens in the next few years. I hope they nail block three pretty soon. Now with this poll in our chat, will Starship launch in January? I don't think so. I don't think they can. I think they, that setback from the last booster that blew up, that's going to send them back a few, you know, maybe three weeks, something like that. Um, so by that time, this year is going to be over. They still have to test a booster, 100% test it. This is a new version of everything, right? So they have a new booster, new ship. Everything's brand new. They have to do extensive testing on either one of these things. 
is if anything happens to this pad, which isn't even completed yet, by the way, they just ripped down the first pad. It's pretty much gone. And pad two is going to be um, up sometime in the near future. We don't know when. It could be could be months, could be three months. I mean, there's they're working hard, but I, you know, I saw them build the first pad. I was there. I was there on the side of the road when they were building the first pad. It took a very long time. Now, engineering is very difficult, and they learned a lot from pad one. Pad two is for a different rocket. Pad two is for block three. What they learned from block one and two, they can transfer over to the block three pad, but it's going to be different. So they need to do different things. And Zesty Zop says block three will have hiccup hiccups. I agree with you. There will be times when they scrub a launch. There will be times when things just don't work out right. And there will be things like what just happened to that last booster. It 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 exploded on the on the test pad. And those kind of things will happen. It's a new rocket. And un- understandably, it's going to take a long time to get it ready and comfortable enough, get the crew comfortable enough to launch this thing. And I'm not a Starship hater at all. I just try to think realistically and logically about things that happen in the aerospace industry. It's a, it's not done yet. The, the ship, of course, we have very talented people, much more, much more talented than me working on these things. They know more than I do about this, but also we've seen some things happen. How many times has block one and block two failed? And some people would say it's not a failure. They they learned. It's true. That's true. But they also failed a bunch. And I'm not a hater, but it's what happened. And you have to realize that you can't just sugarcoat things because it just makes you feel better because that's not how life works. That's not how engineering works. Sure. They learned things, but did they want it to perfectly execute the plan? Yes. A hundred percent. Were they planning on that? Uh, Maybe not a hundred percent, but they didn't want to be held back by failures. And I'm sure there are some people and they're just sugarcoating everything. If you're sugarcoating everything because you say it's not a failure, it's, it's a learning opportunity. Yes, I agree with you, but there are winners and losers. And the fact that sometimes things don't work out well, oh, it's going to be a bad day for Starship if something doesn't work out well on the pad for block three. Um, I don't know. It's, it's a, it's a risky bet to say anywhere before March for the next flight of Starship. It's going to take a month to get that launch pad ready, unfortunately. Um, and they're going to be building the Starship in tandem with that. And I think it's going to be March at least, but more so probably late March, early April, by the time they get this thing ready to fly. And Elon said quarter one of 2026. I agree with them quarter one, but it's going to be like late quarter one, I think. I, I, you know, I've been covering Starship for since the inception, basically. Since it was basically a tent and a dirt pad, I've been covering this stuff. And I think the fact that they are building a brand new rocket with ideas and engineering from another set of that same rocket uh, block one and two and the things that are different are so different between block three and block two upgrades are so different. It's so, it's bigger. It's more powerful and you can't just get it right. The first time, if you can get it right the first time, that's great. Maybe you're blue origin and you can launch, you know, maybe you can launch a perfect rocket and land it. That was cool, right? That was really cool.